Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we implemented some cache and some life. So we could see down here our cache kind of dropping down as I build these towers. And I also noticed at the very end, we have an error where our towers will keep shooting this enemy that no longer exists and give us money every time as if they're actually killing a new enemy every time they shoot. So I spent some time tracking down this bug and fixing it. It was a little bit more complex than I imagined. I mean, you could kind of band-aid solution it and fix it in a couple lines of code, but to really get down to the main issue of it, we're going to have to make a... I wouldn't call it a significant change, but a, a change in multiple classes here. So, I should give credit where credit is due. This was actually suggested many, many episodes ago when we first made our array list of enemies by someone in the comments of these videos, and I, I don't have their name handy right now, but I'll put it in the description of this video to say thank you. I've been kind of putting it off because we didn't really need to fix it then, and I was thinking, you know, maybe we could go without actually having to change all this stuff, but it turns out that it's uh, it's best that we just change this. So what I'm talking about is changing the array list of our enemies, so where we, like, the list where we keep all of our enemies, change it to something called a copy on write array list. And yes, that is a real variable type. It looks pretty ridiculous. It's pretty long. So go ahead and import that, and then up here at the top, we can actually... Where's our error? Yeah, so this episode is going to be a lot of changing this stuff. In fact, here, let me undo this real quick. You can keep it if you'd like. I'm going to change it back to just the way it was before. And actually, you should you should go back too. Let's pretend like we're having a fresh start here because I want to demonstrate something. So first off in our wave class, which is where I'm at right now, if we go to our update method, you see the way we're updating our enemies is every time the wave updates, which is every time the game updates, we go through every enemy in our enemy list, and we check, and we say, is it alive? If it is, then update it, draw it. And we do that every single time. So really, this is not efficient at all, because you know you might realize that once we get 60 waves in, the first you know, 100, 200, 300 enemies will not be alive. So every time we update the game, we're going through 300 dead enemies and saying, are they alive? No. Next. Are they alive? No. Next. So what we should really be doing is removing them. So if they're alive, update them, draw them, else enemy list dot remove E. And E is just the name of the enemy that we're kind of iterating through each time. So if they're alive, update them and draw them. If they're not, remove them from the list. And that should cut down on a lot of uh, lag later on. Not so much now, I don't know if it'll make a huge issue or a huge difference, but later on it'll be a lot more optimized. So let's go ahead and run this real quick and you can see why we're changing our array list to our copy on write array lists. So nothing's changed except we're removing enemies. First off, this guy's now shooting into space over here, which didn't happen before. Once enemies get closer, we'll start shooting them. And I believe after these two enemies die, we should see something unique happen here. There we go. We got the error. If you didn't get the error, that's fine. But um, I got it. And it is a concurrent modification exception. And so what that means is we are modifying the list, which in this case is our enemy list, by removing an entity from it, we're removing an enemy, at the same time as we iterate through it. And so Java kind of protects us by saying, you probably don't want to do this because you're going to end up iterating through objects that no longer exist when we first started iterating through it. So uh, in this case, that's not actually happening, but it is a protection to kind of prevent that from happening. And the way we can kind of fix this is by changing our array list to copy on write array list, which behave a little bit differently. And in fact, I'll leave a, uh, a note in the description of this video if you want to read up more on the difference. I'll try to find a good uh, source for that, probably just the Java docs. But at any rate, basically what they do is they put a protection in place where when we modify the array list, we're actually making a copy of it, as in copy on write, and we're kind of iterating through that. So we're not iterating through the same thing that we're modifying right away, and then it kind of handles the garbage collection uh, to some extent and gets rid of the array list every time we update. Uh, I'll post a link in the comments or in the description and feel free to ask questions in the comments if you have any. But basically we're gonna change our array list to copy on write. And in fact, you might just wanna copy this because we're gonna be putting it a lot all over our program here. Go ahead and import that and put it right here. And it looks like further down here. I'm looking at the right side, by the way, if you didn't know, it shows you where the errors are in your code. So there's a little red bar down here. Go down here. And we need to change this to a copy on write array list. So now our wave class is handled. But if you look, we now have an error in our player class. 
So let's go to our player class. Uh, tower list is fine for now. Uh, where are our enemies? Let's go down here. Update enemy list. Tower getting blue. Okay, so the issue here is we actually need to update the constructors and methods of these places. So let's go to our tower class here. And our enemies should be a copy on right array list. And right here as well. And... Oh, we need to import this. Import. And down here. Down here, right here. Basically, you don't need to follow along perfectly here. Just kind of track down where the errors are and change every array list of enemies we have to copy on right array lists. Keep the array list of towers for now because we might not need to change that. But for the enemies, go ahead and uh, change those. So now I'm going to go to the Tower Cannon Blue class and just fix that right there. Uh, make sure you import it too if you're getting an error. And also, when you import it, we no longer need the regular array list, so feel free to delete that import. We can do that eventually, but feel free to do it now while you're fixing stuff. Same thing here. In fact, if you just press Control shift o it should uh, import the correct one and get rid of the, the old one. Okay, so I have no longer any errors here, uh, except in the Tower Cannon class. Are we still even using this class? I'm going to fix this anyways. Copy on right, copy on right, and import. Oh, and down here. Okay. I no longer have any errors, so let's see if this made any difference in our game. Also, I'm sure you've noticed by now, but I fixed, or I didn't fix, but I changed back to the Yeti. I finally got time to set it up at this new place I'm recording right now. Uh, I listened to the last episode and I apologize for it. I didn't realize it was that much difference in quality, but uh, this should sound better hopefully this week than last week did. So let's going to try this now. All right, we're shooting the first guy. He's down, second guy. Will this tower recognize the second guy? He does. So he now sees all the way across the map, no longer shooting an invisible uh, dead entity here anymore because we removed them from the array entirely. So... You know, previously when we killed an enemy, they would still leave kind of a ghost here. We would just say that they were dead, but they still existed here. And so that kind of created an opening or an opportunity for towers to keep targeting it, even though it wasn't alive. Uh, so that's no longer happening because the entity completely no longer exists, dead or alive in the game, once they die. So that's working better. Uh, I think we should make one more change in our, in our tower class, which is... Let's go to our tower class here and go to our update method. I kind of realized this as I was going through and fixing these array lists. Um, this could be said better here. So here we're shooting. If we can shoot based on time is kind of the best but not so good way I could explain that. Pretty much we have an if statement that is just checking if we've waited long enough since the last shot and if we have, then we can shoot. And we kind of have, first off, this update method looks kind of ridiculous, <laughs> but uh, it's serving its purpose for, for right now. Um, so we kind of have an order of operations here where we try to make sure that we're targeted and, and make sure that if we shouldn't be targeted, we're not. And so eventually by the time we get down here, there should be no issues with uh, shooting at something that doesn't exist. But we can actually go one step further and up here where we say, if we're not targeted, find a target. We could actually just say else and we can copy this entire thing right here and delete it from right there and put it here. Is this indented correctly? Uh, so if we are not targeted, then find us a target. Else, if we are targeted, then shoot. So it's pretty much just another way of saying uh, the way it was plus that, except it's in a kind of more condensed version. We're using an else if statement here. Uh, so this will also cut down on opportunities for our enemies to shoot at enemies when they're not... Or I'm sorry, for our towers to shoot at enemies when they're not targeted, if that makes sense. Uh, we have our time since last shot, increasing by the delta. We should actually multiply this by speed, but we'll do that later when we kind of redo our speed. Uh, angle, calculate angle. Uh, I believe there was one other thing I wanted to change in our acquire target method. Let's see, closest null... Give me a second while I look at this and try to figure out what it was I changed. Oh, that's right, okay. 
So we're checking for every enemy. Uh, if you'll recall when we made this, what we're doing is we're setting an arbitrary distance of 10,000, which is larger than anything could possibly be on our, our screen or our current map. And then we're saying for every single enemy, uh, if it is in range, which we're not really doing much with our, our towers of range right now. In fact, if you go to our tower type, I believe they're all a thousand. Uh, maybe next episode we'll actually get our range working properly. But anyway, if they're within our range, and if their distance is less than the previous closest distance of the enemy. So we're just pretty much going through every single enemy. We're trying to find the closest one. And when we find one, we're saying that's the enemy we want to shoot at, and then we shoot it. We actually, believe it or not, we have no check in here to say if they're alive or not. Now, this is less of an issue because now, remember, we're removing enemies from the array via our copy on right array list. But just to be sure, we should actually put a check here as well and say if the distance is less and if E is alive. So if E, as in the enemy we're looking at, is alive. And that'll cut down on instances or opportunities for errors as well. So I think this looks pretty good. Next episode, we're going to work on our... Uh, and the reason we did this, by the way, this episode is because we implemented cache system. And now that we actually have a way to monitor what's going on as far as points or score or money, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's easier to pick up on these errors where stuff's going on behind the scenes that we couldn't really tell, as in our towers were killing an enemy every single time they shot at nothing, and so we fixed that. So maybe next episode we'll actually go into more of our cache system and our live system and kind of improve on those. Maybe make a game over screen when we run out of lives. Those are all things we could do on the horizon here. But at any rate, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week on Indie Programmer. Mm -hmm.